So uh, it's also a pleasure to introduce Helen Owens, who is General Manager of the Office of Spatial Policy in the Department of Resources, Energy and Tourism, and she's going to talk about the Foundation Spatial Data Framework. Thank you, and I too uh, thank NICTA for the opportunity to come and talk today, and I guess uh, having listened to John talk there, uh, what I'm going to talk about today for my 15 minutes of fame is indeed that, uh, that issue of policy or principles to practice. And I'm going to talk about the practice of what we've been doing in the geospatial arena uh, in terms of opening up government geospatial information. Even further challenging for us because a lot of what we are seeking to open up is indeed kept uh, tightly held within nine governments across Australia. So imagine the difficulties that you have in your agencies about releasing um, government data when you're dealing with one single agency. Um, our, ch our challenge is to deal with nine separate governments and, uh, and hence uh, uh, progress can be slowed somewhat. Starting off though, uh, I would like to say that we think in the geospatial domain we've actually been having a bit of a party in the last, um, in the last 12 months, but unfortunately we've been having that party with ourselves and, uh, and we'd like to invite other people along and hence, uh, hence me speaking here today. The geospatial element of all this really is the uh, enabling and facilitation of the value of opening up gov government data. We are the question, or the answer to the question of where, why, what, and where again. So where are my people? Where are my facilities? Where am I going to rescue someone? Where am I going to put my infrastructure? And so on. Uh, we think in the geospatial environment that in fact government information in the form of data tables it's actually pretty useless unless you contextualise it around some contextual information about where it's located and how it's impacted by what's happening on the earth. So what I'd like to just talk about briefly today is our foundation data uh, uh, framework that we're working on and that really is the policy piece. And then talk briefly about what John touched on there, the infrastructure elements about how you actually get that data out so that people can use it. And I'd like to speak specifically about some of those challenges that have been identified in the report and what we have found in our progress towards opening up geospatial data and hopefully touch on a couple of uh, successes as well. Uh, before I kick off that, I would like to uh, um, thank the Australian Research Council for stealing my boss, um, and that, uh, that is tongue in cheek. I'm not happy about Drew Clark going over to, uh, to broadband communications, but he has nonetheless uh, started this process for us uh, in RET, and he will continue to keep a very close eye on it in his new mandate uh, in his new department. So what we have on the screen here is a, a very simplified version of what we're talking about. Right in the centre there we have what we call foundation spatial data and this is made up of 10 data themes which have been now agreed across all nine governments of Australia. We have a council that sits over all this, uh, they are called ANSLIC, the Spatial Information Council and we meet uh, three times a year and our sole focus over the last year and a half and into the next year is how we are going to open up the foundation data that is held within all of the nine governments for open access, not only to government, but to the broader community. We have some specific challenges around uh, uh, what we call a spatial data infrastructure and that is the supply chain elements of how it all comes together. And what we are talking about when we talk those foundation data sets is actually ecosystems within themselves. If I can take one thing, address. Address currently has an entire ecosystem around it in terms of funding streams within various jurisdictions. And in order to get that data set out and available to the public, we have to dismantle existing funding streams methodologies, collection management, and so on. So, uh, as you can imagine, it's not a, a simple task. 
We are focusing on those 10 foundation data themes as being very important and they are the ones that most people will use and most people will contextualise their government information with. We recognise though that we're not covering everything. So we do have people who say, well, what about my set of data? What about marine data? What about coastline data? What about this data, that data? We need that as well. We can't do everything at once, so what we're doing is tackling this from the foundation and then building out, and as you can see from the diagram there, uh, there are various other uh, foundation spatial data that sit around the outside of the centre. We also are working very closely with our friends at ABS because the socio-economic layer also provides you with your government data very important contextual information um, about what's happening in that location. So we give the location and what the location looks like, you can link your data to that and the ABS give you what's happening in that location in terms of uh, collection out of census where they can and, uh, and various other socio-economic uh, information that they collect. So again, Geospatial really is a facilitator and a supporter of open government data and we think that we've made significant progress in the last year and we're certainly driving hard to uh, get this data out so that you can contextualise your data. But one thing I would like to say is that from a, from a spatial perspective, our, ours is slightly different because it doesn't necessarily just fundamentally fall out of government business. It actually has to be collected. And what we say about geospatial information is open does not mean free. So somebody's got to pay to collect and distribute that information. Um, and that's one of our challenges that we've faced along the way. So what are we going to do? We've talked about an Australian spatial data infrastructure for almost 20 years in this country uh, and very, very limited progress so far. So we're really breaking that down now to fundamentals and we're saying, well, what is an ASDI and what does it look like? There are all these other activities within government, the statistical spatial framework, the marine spatial data infrastructure, multiple inf information infrastructures. Indeed, in the NCRIS projects uh, right there, there's, there's multiple infrastructures that we're talking about. And what we're looking at doing is actually fundamentally changing that concept. I want to talk a bit about the barriers, though, before I get to that. So John mentioned a few of these. Uh, there is a, a currently a culture of risk around opening up data. And really, this takes a really strong policy focus and leadership in that policy environment. We've been lucky in the spatial game because we've had Drew Clark, who has seriously taken on this policy issue around opening up government geospatial data. Framework data sets from our perspective come from multiple uh, suppliers, custodians of data, and as I mentioned, there's a whole lot of uh, dismantling of the ex extant processes and funding models that we need to go through. And lastly, of course, um, any policy that you put out must have teeth. Uh, one of the things that we've found in our environment is ANSLIC actually doesn't have the mandate um, to set guidelines around uh, the release of policy. So we have to do it by coercion, we have to do it by negotiation, and uh, so far there is, as John pointed out, a lot of goodwill around this and, and success breeds success. We hope that our success in the geospatial environment, getting our geospatial data out to you so that you can then you best utilise your open data will actually then subsequently breed more success. There is a vision. Australian government information will be linked to a location and this will improve decision making, policy making, productivity, innovation in our economy. Our policy aim is to make the foundation spatial data sets free and open to the economy. Not just government, not just three tiers of government, not just the FMA agencies, but the entire economy. And we think that the economic benefits and flow on from that will be uh, very significant. So the solution we're looking at here is taking away this concept of, that we've talked about for 20 years, 
an Australian spatial data infrastructure that nobody really knows what the hell means. And we're talking now about a national spatial information infrastructure, which is linked then to other government inf information infrastructures, and data.gov uh, would be precisely one of those. There are multiple. There are some happening in the NCRIS space, in the research space. There are also, there's also a major um, infrastructure currently being developed in the Bureau of MET, which is the National Environmental Information Infrastructure. We're looking at how we might link various research infrastructures like ORIN and TURN and IMOS and helping you to use the data that sits in those infrastructures to contextualise your government information. We're working on some key principles and, uh, and later this year OSP is hoping to put out some policies uh, around these principles of design of anything you do from a geospatial perspective. We seek to leverage existing work, so we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We're, we're ad ad advertising adapt. If you can't adapt, adopt. Actually, it's the other way around. Adopt, adapt, and as a last thing, invent. So what's out there already, publish it and make it known that it's there so that people can reuse when and, and uh, where possible. We want to avoid technical lock-in. And uh, we've been having this conversation with industry for some years now around uh, agnostic uh, systems, software, that actually uh, is plug and play, uh, loosely coupled, so that we can actually um, make uh, iterative approaches to our development of our infrastructure. And of course, we are seeking to adopt the principles around uh, the Office of the Information Commissioner and uh, indeed we've had some su success doing that. So we have this thing called the ANZ Foundation Spatial Data Framework which was the diagram I put up first up and it sits front and centre in the middle of a national spatial information infrastructure and that is our first piece of work. Our second piece of work which will be released in March is an Australian Spatial Data Directory which geoscience currently are building on our behalf. And it will be the linking metadata point at which um, people can access spatial information through a search mechanism, provided the metadata is uh, appropriately loaded. And we have that underway at the moment. And this is where we're going. So of course with the spatial data, we do find at, we're at one end here, um, down the primary capture. That is all done generally from the foundation level at the jurisdictions. We've defined the fundamentals. We are now building the harmonisation models between the nine governments and we are seeking agreement uh, in blood, hopefully, that there will be a work program over the course of the next uh, seven years or so where we will integrate the national spatial data product and we will make it free of charge. And some of the activities that are happening or the policy stances that are happening within the jurisdictions, for example, the Victorian government uh, example that John gave earlier, are really pivotal to us achieving that. Further value adds then, we're seeking to work with Agimo on uh, linking data.gov with our infrastructure and then providing uh, open access where possible so that anyone who wants to put their government data, their CSV file, their uh, database against a contextual set of information is able to do it. And then uh, it is our mandate, I guess, to build knowledge out of information and that's what we're all about. So just a couple of key things before I finish off. I'd like to reiterate, open for us doesn't mean free. So all of this has to be funded in some way. And one of the key barriers we have is convincing ministers to spend money on data. And convincing ministers that in fact data is a strategic asset that needs to be managed and coordinated centrally. 
And we're having those conversations as high up as we can, but getting resonance about that uh, can be difficult. And we're hoping we can call upon our, our colleagues in the policy environments in Australian government to assist us with that conversation. The second thing is uh, a couple of successes. Geoscience Australia in around about March this year will actually release all of their Landsat imagery data archive. And they are doing that through a uh, multilateral program through the uh, National Com Computational Infrastructure located in ANU. So what that means is all of the imagery held by Geoscience Australia in their archives will be freely and publicly available uh, online and that's going to happen in the next couple of months. We are working very solidly with the PSMA Australia on releasing the address data. We've come up with a couple of roadblocks in the last couple of months. We're working through those issues. It's not quite a success but I'm calling it that because if you say it enough then it will happen, right? Um, and, uh, and the last thing, of course, is uh, what, we're, what we're doing also in Geoscience Australia around the, uh, what we call the OGA panel, which is the optical, uh, geospatial, radar and elevation panel. So everything that is purchased through that panel is actually multi purchased on a multi-use basis. We have terabytes of data in there, imagery data, optical data, radar data, elevation data. It is free, it's open access available on the Geoscience website, so please if you're looking for something uh, that is along those lines, uh, make use. And we will make an effort to join with AGIMO, with data.gov, to make this a whole lot easier to find for you and, uh, and hopefully by the end of this year we will be able to demonstrate in more real terms the successes that we've achieved uh, through opening up our data. And uh, lastly, we've been having a party. We don't want to have it on our own anymore. We'd actually like you all to join us. So thank you very much. <laughs>